Hi guys, welcome back to the Kilohertz channel and another one of my how-to videos. Right, what's wrong with this picture? That's right, the wing mirror indicator is no longer working. Now the reason why? Some decided to try and squeeze past my car in a hurry. As a result, the lens is shattered and the indicator no longer works. Oh well, gives me an excuse to create another video, doesn't it? Okay, so just arrived from Mercedes is this nice and shiny replacement part. At time of filming, this is available for £27.54, and I know it's possible to get it slightly cheaper off eBay, etc. But for sake of saving a couple of quid, I opted to go to my local dealership. So for the driver's side, on the right hand drive, it's this part number here, and the passenger side is the one below here. So opening it up, we can have a quick look inside the box. And you can see this one is fully intact with the end part, which is completely snapped off mine, still intact. Now, you can see that it fits into the car via these two screw holes either side. And turning it over, you can see one electrical uh, connector or socket here. So it's now time to dismantle the wing mirror assembly off the car. Make sure that the windows are fully folded out and then carefully apply a small amount of force pushing the mirror towards the front of the car. Uh, don't worry, you won't break this. Press down on the glass at the bottom left hand corner enough so that you can squeeze your fingers behind the top right hand side of the glass. Then pull the entire glass out until it pops outwards. So you'll now need to unplug the two tiny little connectors as well as the larger electrical connector off the back of the mirror glass. Now remember to be extremely careful here because the last thing you want to do is drop the glass and have to pay out for that as well. With the glass free of the mirror, locate the three T10 Torx screws that you need to undo to remove the glass adjust the motor from the mirror assembly. As you can see here, they're quite long screws, so make sure you've fully undone them before trying to remove the motor. And also, be extremely careful not to drop a screw like I've just done here. Don't worry, I found it. Next up, remove the four remaining screws, once again T10 torque size. Removing these allows you to pull off the bezel surround from the mirror assembly. And not forgetting there's one last screw hidden in the centre of the mirror. Now it might be covered by some of the wiring loom, but as you see on the video here, it should be right in the centre. Now you need to unhook the loom from the little tab holding it in place at the bottom left of the mirror. And then the electrical connector in the dead centre. Now if you're not freely able to remove this connector, you may need to use a pair of needle nose pliers to force it out. Next up, grab the outer case of the mirror, carefully pulling it free, enough so that you can hang it loose, allowing you to access the two remaining T10 torque screws holding the lens in place, which you're gonna to need to replace.
This next part is the tricky bit. You need to push the indicator lens through the surround, so enough so it can unclip. It also helps if you kind of pull it towards the car at the same time once it's free. And here it is from a different angle, just so you can see what I'm on about. It's now time to fit the replacement part. It's basically the reverse of getting it out. However, as this new part has fresh rubber seal, it's a lot trickier to get it to fit snugly, as you can see here. Grab hold of the mirror surround to move it back into position so it clips on the mirror hinge. Remember to connect the electrical connector in the centre of the mirror and also to feed the loom back under its retaining tab. It's important you do this otherwise the frame won't connect back on again. Once you've reattached the bezel part of the outer case, grab the adjustment motor with the flat side facing you, connect the connector and align the screw holes. Once all the screws are back in place, it's time to offer up the glass back to the surround. Connect the white electrical connector as well as the two smaller black connector to make sure that everything will work once again. Once you've done all this, simply align up and push the glass back into place until you hear a click. Just time for a quick shot showing the old uh, cracked broken unit and the new shiny one.
And here is the end result, looking factory fresh, and most importantly, the indicator works once again. And that comes to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button and also click on the bell notification icon so you get notified as soon as I upload any new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, cheers.